In today's video, we're going to have a look at the wall plug from Fibero. Um, so this is a IoT um, wall plug, so it's a, it switches your plug on and off remotely. As you can see here, I've got the UK variant of the uh, Fibero home plug, but they do also do the European style and the US style. Um, they differ very slightly, uh, so have a look uh, before buying, but make sure you've selected the right one. Um, there are some extra options on some of them. Uh, for instance, the US version, you can also get a uh, USB charger on the side of it. But today we're just going to look at the UK variant. I'll go into some of the features that make this stand out from the rest, really, um, a, a bit later on in the video. But um, for now, let's get straight on into the unboxing, and you can see exactly what you get in the box. So inside the box, we have, as you'd expect, the wall plug. So on the face of it, you've got the word for Barrow, and you've got this ring around the outside. And I'll speak about this in a bit more detail in a little bit. Um, but this is an indicator and has RGB LEDs underneath. At the back, we have the uh, dead wave notification and a bit more information. Um, so as you can see, this is 13 amps rated, which is the same as a UK plug. Um, this will differ depending on which plug you get. And it's obviously rated for the right voltage and frequency for the UK. Again, may, may differ depending on what device you get. Underneath here, just got the instruction manual, a little bit more detail. Um, and it's written in different languages, as you'd expect. But if you want more information, you can get all these guides and stuff online as well. So that's everything. So as you probably know, there's uh, there's tons of these different uh, IoT switches that you can you can buy. Um, so you might be asking yourself, what sets this apart from the rest? So there's a few little things, little features that um, Favero have added to this that really set it apart from the others on the market, to be honest. Um, for starters, as you see around the outside, there's a clear plastic ring. And when plugged in, you'll see that that light lights up. You can switch that LED off if you want, um, and you can also uh, customize it if you want. But by default, it's set to show you how much power it's consuming. So depending on what the color is, it will show you how much wattage is being consumed by the device. So if you're using it on, say, something that consumes a lot of power, you'll see it turn to red very rapidly. Um, and show you that your device is consuming a lot of power. So it could be a really good way of sort of gauging how much energy you're consuming um, and try and save some energy. Another thing that's quite helpful is you've got this button on the side. This button is used not only for addressing the device when you first install it onto your system, um, but is also a hardware button that you can toggle the switch on and off. That seems like something that really isn't worth mentioning, just having a switch on it for toggling the power on and off. However, in the news recently, quite a few times, we've seen things like uh, massive outages on servers, things like uh, Amazon's own servers that um, can stop a lot of IoT devices working. And people having all of their smart stuff, be it whatever, uh, be unaccessible or unusable until servers come back online. Um, so I can't stress enough how a simple thing like this can go quite a long way uh, for usability. So the next thing to mention is standard in the UK, so um, you get it in the UK plug anyway, um, and across all of the, the plugs that they do. Um, but we have this in a standard in our sockets anyway, so this isn't um, anything new to us. Um, however, in the European style uh, wall plug, they've included sliding uh, plastic covers for the live and neutral contacts, um, which as I say, is something we have in the UK anyway. Um, but what this st does is stops little fingers like children's fingers being able to get in and get your fingers inside them contacts, which is just a nice little added feature and a bit of extra safety, which I like to think they didn't have to do because, as I say, it's not a standard um, anywhere else in Europe, um, but it's a definitely a nice to have. So I'm using the Z-Wave uh, Plus variant of the uh, Barrow plug but there is also a version that is wireless and connects directly to your um, Apple smart home um, 
and I've got this connected to uh, the Fibero Home Center 3, as you can just about see beside me. Um, you can connect this to a standard Z-Wave hub, and that'd be fine. You won't get any firmware updates or anything like that from Fibero that can bring improvements to the product. Um, so it's always good to use the uh, Fibero Home Center with this device. So in review, um, setting up the Fibero wall plug was really quick and easy. Literally, all you do is uh, set your device into learning mode and then just push the button on the side and instantly found it and away it went. And as I've said in a previous video about the Home Center 3, um, when taking control of this device from either my smart app on my phone uh, or I've used the, the button, um, but we'll do a video on that in the future, um, it's always been very quick to react and does exactly what you'd expect, um, which is always a good sign to see. Obviously, I can't comment for um, those using it with any other type of gateway hub, but I, I would assume it would be just as reactive as any of your other devices on the system. It's small and thin and quite uh, doesn't protrude too far, um, which is quite important when you'd be trying to hide it behind maybe a cabinet or something like that, something that probably you can't access with your hand very easily. Um, so yeah, that's always a as always a plus, because um, that's probably the chance reason why you're going to be installing this anyway, because it's something you can't access very easily. So, something I didn't mention before, um, which is quite an important point actually. Again, if we go into the details on the home center uh, gateway, we can look up exactly what wattage is being used. So not only can we rely on the uh, the ring of LEDs around the outside, if you decide to leave them as the, the default setup, you can see exactly how much wattage is being consumed. Um, and that can give you a good idea of how much being used around your house completely. And if you're using something like a smart meter, you can really narrow down exactly where your power is being used um, without too much difficulty. So again, um, the Fibero products are just that little bit better than uh, other ones on the market. Um, and they seem to have had that little bit extra attention to detail um, that you might not get with another uh, device. If you haven't already watched our um, video on the Home Center 3, um, I'll link to it at the top of the screen, but I'll go into a bit more detail about the amount of support and things available um, with the Fibero products. But one of the things I'd really like to outline again, um, if you haven't seen that video, is that uh, not only have you got the support from Fibero, which is very good, um, but you've also got a massive forum that they host uh, and there's lots of people who I'd like to call them uh, IoT enthusiasts who are very, very helpful if you're having any problems with these devices. And also, they've created some really interesting and exciting ways to use a lot of these devices. So if you've got any questions, um, always put them in the comments of this video because I'll always try and answer as much as I can um, on these Fibero devices. But you've also got the Fibero forum um, and they'll try and help you as much as they can there hope you've enjoyed this video if you have make sure you hit the like button because it really helps us out um, and also the subscribe button because there'll be plenty more videos about Fibero in the near future um, and also any other tech that we like to cover around here so hopefully if this video spoke to you then some of our others will as well um, so thanks a lot for your time and uh, see you in the next one